Now, continuing our Thought Leaders series here on LMFM, and we're joined today by John Stewart of the Irish National Organisation of the Unemployed. John, you're very welcome. Good morning, Orla. You're a Meath man. What part are you from? I am indeed a Meath man. The uh, The family home is uh, between uh, Kells and Minolte in the townland of Knockerani, uh, but I live uh, myself in Navan. So you're, you're, you're a born and reared Meath man. You're, and were you, are you supporting the footballer? Uh, I was. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the, the result that we wanted there uh, last weekend. Uh, but uh, absolutely, yes, uh, uh, always support the, uh, the men in, uh, in yellow and green. The yellow and green, indeed. I have pictures up on my bathroom wall of my young lads when they were very small with the yellow and gold on them. I think Trevor, was it Trevor Giles? Trevor Giles. He was their big hero yes. at the time. Yes. <laughs> That's yeah. going back a few years. So, John, you represent the unemployed and you're campaigning very hard, I know, to try and, and keep that on the agenda and figures out this week not looking good Yes I I, uh, work with the Irish National Organisation of the Unemployed I'm the coordinator of that organisation I have been now for the last uh, four years uh, although I first started in the organisation back uh, in 1999 uh, yeah, the uh, the unemployment figures that were out uh, there last week, the live register, uh, a small decrease uh, in the register. Obviously, that's to be welcomed, particularly if it means that, you know, people are leaving the register to take up work. I'm not sure, though, if that is necessarily uh, the case in every respect. We know certainly that immigration is a factor, I think, all in all of this. And there are other reasons as well why people might leave the live register. But the overall figure is 437,000 people seasonally adjusted. Um, and these are still historically high numbers and levels of unemployment. And obviously the key, as I would see, a crisis figure in all of that is the 200,000 people term. who are long-term mm-hmm. unemployed. Um, and, and this is an extraordinary number of people to be out of work now for a year or more. And indeed, you know, many of those will be out of work uh, for two years uh, and more as well, unfortunately. So this, I think, is where the, the really the crisis is in terms of the live register overall. And and the pattern would be that the longer somebody is out of work, clearly the longer, the harder it is for them to return to the workforce because all kinds of social issues get involved at that point. Yes, I mean, it's difficult enough and anybody who's unemployed will tell you it's difficult enough to, enough to get a job um, if you're unemployed, it's easier to get a job if you have a job. Um, if you're long term unemployed and all the studies show this, it's infinitely more difficult uh, to get a job. Uh, employers will tend to recruit, as I said, either people in the job already uh, or people who may have more recently become unemployed. And that's actually supported when you look at the exit uh, data from the live register. Uh, for 2011, which is the the current set of statistics, um, 140,000 people left the live register uh, to take up work. Now, that's according to the department statistics. The vast majority of those people who managed to escape from the live register and back to employment were unemployed for less than a year. And indeed, the majority of those were unemployed for less than six months. So you can see, really, if the, the, the statistics bear this out. What we know from the work that we do bear this out as well, that the longer you're unemployed, the more difficult it is for you to get back to work. What you're saying there, John, would point to the need for people to get back to work as quickly as possible and not to sort of sink into that place where, as you say, it's going to be very, very hard to pull them back up out of it. And it would seem to point to a need for a a, a strong reaction when people are first find themselves unemployed, that they could immediately get onto some sort of a training programme or get into some sort of a support network where they would actually stay in the focus and in the mindset of being employed. Are we doing anything in that sphere at the moment? It's really important, Orla, that when people lose their jobs, uh, that they're not left to drift. Uh, And unfortunately, that has been the case and it has been the experience of tens of thousands of people who are unemployed. Now, obviously, ultimately, the issue here, though, is the lack of jobs. So without job creation, it's difficult to see how, you know, we're going to really see the inroads into the live register that we need to make. But absolutely, again, there's very, very strong evidence that the earlier the intervention is for the person when they become unemployed, the type of intervention is absolutely critical. It has to be the right type of intervention. And by that, I mean, if it's about a training programme or a labour market programme like community employment, it has to be the right programme for that person. And that's particularly important in terms of training. Uh, The courses that people are being sent on must really have outcomes for individuals. Uh, It must meet their needs. Uh, Otherwise, it's not a good use of resources. And unfortunately, in the past, there have been too many examples of people who felt 
forced indeed to go on to training programmes where they couldn't see an outcome for themselves. Uh, they were taken up places which other people could maybe more usefully have taken up in terms of those particular programmes. So those kind of things need to be sorted out and need to be tackled. You would like to see ideally a situation where people find themselves unemployed, that there is somewhere to go the following Monday morning, literally, that they could actually go into a resource centre the following Monday morning and have resources around them to job seek and send out CVs and do all of that, that they don't, as I say, slip back into the thing of in the home, losing confidence, losing that will to go out in the morning. I mean, how do you capture that moment? Well, first of all, there are there is a, a very important place that people have to go to uh, on the Monday morning uh, after the, the Friday if they've unfortunately lost their job. And that's to the, the local social protection office uh, in order to make uh, whatever application for whatever payment they might be entitled to. And the two main sources of, I suppose, payments are uh, job seekers benefit. Uh, which is the the PRSI related payment uh, or your stamps as they used to be called uh, or job seekers allowance which is the means tested payment and again it's very very important and I would say this to any of your listeners who unfortunately have recently found themselves unemployed it's really important that people should register with the social welfare office Um, there are all sorts of reasons why that's important Um, uh, first of all the key one is in terms of obviously entitlement uh, to a payment uh, but also there may be other supports that people may be able to to access uh, uh, through doing that in terms of being able to access uh, different programmes and so on. So that's really important that people understand that. Don't assume for example that if somebody doesn't have an entitlement to job seekers benefit because they don't have enough PRSI contributions don't assume that you're not entitled to a job seekers allowance payment. So it's really important that people should apply for them. Now, in terms of what's available for people, in terms of the state services, this has been an issue that has come up uh, frequently now uh, over the last number of years since the unemployment crisis really started. And that is the inability of the state's employment services, uh, what was previously known as the FOSS employment services, to respond to the needs of unemployed people. There's simply... There, there wasn't enough programmes available for people. There weren't enough training courses. Um, there were a whole range of issues that people were experiences, experiencing that basically weren't being dealt with and weren't being addressed at the time. And that's still an issue. Um, there's also, though, a very uh, important other service, and indeed a range of other services that people who are unemployed can link into. So there's, for example, the local employment service, and they do really good work. And there is a local employment service in both uh, Drogheda and uh, Dundalk. Uh, so again, if you're if you're unemployed in those areas, you know, find out where the address of your local employment service is and, and go and see them. Do you think all of this, John, is confusing for people in the sense that I know there's been talk about a one stop shop that people can go to that they can actually get access all the information in the one place? Has, has that? Come or how close are we to that, it? That's a very good point. It's something that we've been calling now for years for, which is that one point of contact uh, when you're unemployed or if indeed you're looking to start your own business, for example, as a way out of your unemployment. Uh, it's very, very important to have available to people somewhere that they can go to get the whole range of information, whether that's in terms of their entitlement to social welfare payments, whether it's in relation to whether they qualify for a programme, who they can talk to in terms of maybe local training uh, and development and education opportunities. Uh, We're finally beginning to see that it's, well, at the moment it's a working title. It's called the the National Employment and Entitlement Service. uh, And that was set out uh, by the Department there of Social Protection uh, there last year and more recently indeed the Pathway to Work Initiative, uh, which was announced at the beginning of this year. So the intention is to bring all of that together in one, as you said, one-stop shop. We're, we're some considerable way, though, away from that at the moment. At the moment, there are four pilots uh, in place, uh, none here in uh, in Louth and Mead, uh, unfortunately. Um, and obviously, we have to wait then to see what the outcome of that is going to be. There are plans to roll out this new service to another 10 or 12 social protection offices and ultimately to all of the social protection offices uh, that are administered by the Department of Social Protection. So these are offices where the intention would be that uh, not just the welfare issues uh, relating to uh, uh, to unemployment it can be addressed but critically the, the job seeking supports 
guidance, you know, the adult guidance, uh, the referral on to relevant education uh, and uh, training programmes. All of that is very, very good. Sounds great in principle, but really it's not happening as quickly as we would like it to see and indeed as quickly as unemployed people deserve.